Well, says that a section of the interstate was closed from 612 to when troopers well, to when troopers arrived until about nine o'clock. And I did speak to a woman who witnessed this wreck last night. We spoke by phone this afternoon, and she said it was just awful. And she was still sort of processing what she had seen. She pulled over to to talk some, to the couple that had been in that Mazda, and she just said that her her thoughts were with both families involved today. We'll send it on back to you. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Calls for change. Body camera video shows a screaming nine-year-old girl pepper sprayed and handcuffed in the back of a police car. Now her family wants the officers brought to justice. Plus, reforming immigration policies put in place by former President Trump. What the White House hopes these new executive orders will do for undocumented immigrants. But first, a mother holds her baby for the first time after giving birth while in a coma and fighting COVID-19. The special reunion coming at you next. Your WXII 12 forecast is always available on the free WXII 12 app. Stay connected with meteorologist Michelle Kennedy on her Facebook page. COVID-19 nearly claimed a Wisconsin mother's life. Nearly three months ago, she gave birth while in a coma and battling COVID-19. Well, last week, she was well enough to go home and meet her baby girl for the very first time. Here's Brady Mallory with a closer look. I can't believe how small she is. Ten tiny fingers I love you so much. holding on to a bond I missed you. created months ago. You know, Kelsey's she she loves she loves her family and she loves her kids so much. Powered by a mother's love. I, I told her this morning that uh, I said I'm more nervous than I was on her on her wedding day or our first date or our first the birth of our first child. Kelsey Townsend was nine months pregnant when she was diagnosed with COVID in October. 
so many ups and downs um, and just so much uncertainty. Uh, it's just, it's been real difficult. She gave birth on November 4th while in a medically induced coma. She was in critical care, I mean, and that best explains it. Um, there, was, there was many times that we didn't think she was gonna make it through the night. She spent a lot of time in the ICU, relying on machines to work for her heart and lungs. At one point, doctors believed she would need a double lung transplant just to survive. They had to, uh, multiple times, they, they had to call in uh, specialists that were home and not, not in during the night, and they had to rush from home early in the morning to, uh, to care to her, so. Kelsey's medical team is calling her the miracle mom. We don't know precisely what allowed her lungs to start recovering. A mom who waited months to hold her new baby. It's gonna be really nice to have her home and knowing that she's gonna get to meet Lucy and be with the kids and she's very excited for that. A mom who will continue to find strength in the love of her family. Um, hey mommy, we got your favorite ice cream. Yes. Breaking news, this just in, Amazon says Jeff Bezos will step down as CEO of the company that he founded nearly 30 years ago. Bezos will transition to executive chair of Amazon's board. He founded Amazon in 1994 and since then has really morphed it from an online bookstore into a mega online retailer that sells and delivers all sorts of products all over the world. Here at home, here's a live look for you. I-40 at Wendover Avenue in Greensboro, all clear, no delays to report. We'll keep you posted, though, if anything changes here or throughout the Piedmont Triad. Well, Puxatawney Phil has spoken, and it is official. Six more weeks of winter. The Pennsylvania groundhog emerged at Gobbler's Knob Tuesday morning to see his shadow. Unlike previous years, only 16 members of the Groundhog Club were present to see Puxatawney Phil make his forecast because of pandemic restrictions. But North Carolina groundhog Sir Walter Wally did not see his shadow disagreeing with Puxatawney Phil's prediction, Michelle. So I don't know, what are you <laughs> predicting for at least today? Hey, I'm putting our money on some sunshine, some warmer weather. If we all just think 70s, it's going to happen, right? And sunshine, well, I, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I do know that we are expecting a couple of cold bursts here as we get you into the next, you know, 7 to 10 days. So we've got one coming up for the weekend. First, though, we're trying to get out of the one we're in, and you can see Boone, just a lot of snow blowing around out there. They have wind chill advisories that have gone into effect for areas in the mountains through the overnight hours. We also have high wind warnings for Surrey County as we head into Virginia there along Interstate 77 for those mountain passes where winds have been gusting anywhere from 50 to about 65 miles an hour in those zones where winds can be amplified pretty easily. And you're looking at some snow from earlier in the day. We had a little bit of wind snow, upper elevations getting hit with some good snow as well in the mountains, um, two to three inches there. And you can look, it looks like a little bit more than what it is on the roadways, but we're seeing all of that starting to dry out, that upper low kind of transferring some of the energy to the north and east now and we're going to dry out see more sunshine for you tomorrow so temperatures at 35 in winston Salem, 39 in greensboro 25 in galax so feels more like 11 degrees at this hour single digits elsewhere and you can see across the state we do feel much colder some 10 degrees cooler than where we're sitting at this hour and right now although temperatures are reading at about 39 degrees the winds will still play a factor in our forecast even through the day tomorrow they're going to come down just a little bit for the triad and foothills but still up enough where we talk about wind chill values most of the day and it's going to be blustery. Here's the mountain wind gust currently at 35 miles an hour in Jefferson. Just within the last 10 minutes, it's been reading in the 41 mile an hour range. So we know that we've got some more wind concerns to get through. Those winds are relaxed late tomorrow. But until then, we've got advisories in place at least through 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. A wind warning. That should drop off at 7 tonight, but dangerous mountain passes, and we still have concerns there, so be cautious along Interstate 77. You see the wind chill advisories. Jefferson's included in this. Blowing rock as you head up into the mountains. Those areas could feel like five below. Meantime, the triad, you could feel like the teens through early tomorrow morning or a few single digit readings possible with 28 degrees and temperatures down into the 20s combined with those winds gusting anywhere from 20 to 30 miles an hour. It's going to be a cold day. We've got you at 45. You'll feel like the 30s for a good part of the afternoon and in the foothills from near 29 degrees to near 43 feeling like the 30s as well. It's a blustery afternoon in the mountains too and we're going to keep your impact days or hours on as we continue to see those winds stay up gusting to 30 and blustery sunshine. But if you have to wait out of the bus stop or maybe you're waiting on a ride, uh, to get you home from work. You want to make sure you have those extra layers ready to go. You want to have 
your skin covered. It's risk for hypothermia as we get you through the early morning hours and early tomorrow morning. We eventually see those improving conditions with sunshine. But take a look for your Thursday into Friday. This is when we have our next chance for rain and we do warm up. We see temperatures that gradually get you closer to normal for Friday and into Saturday. And you're seeing upper 40s to some low 50s out there potentially. And then we have another round on Saturday night into Sunday that could bring in some wintry weather, but it's going to look spotty at this point. We do have a chance to see some snow in the mountains once again. I think for the tribe though and the foothills and we're on the fence as to whether we'll see much going into your Sunday morning. So we'll keep it posted on that. We've got 40s out there to 50s on Friday and then heading into next week, a very cold day on Monday. Look at that, 33 degrees with 16 for morning lows. That will definitely be an impact day for us. We'll have much more for you coming up.